Hello, this is Derek Ward, Senior Solution Sales Engineer for Hummel Vision America. And in this video, I'll be presenting a short overview of the Design Pro tool, one of the latest software tools to come out from Hummel Vision. So to start, I am at the hummelvisionamerica.com slash design pro portal. And I can sign up for the beta, either by hitting try beta or access beta. I'll fill out a short questionnaire, then you'll have access to the tool. And once you have access, because this is a beta, uh, there's a short notice about um, the capability of there being any type of bugs uh, and, again, stressing that it is a beta. But once we hit agree, we can start off by creating a new project. For this, I'll just name test, leave a note, test, who the client would be. If you have any logos or anything you would like to drop uh, for your project, the type of unit of measurement between feet and meter and the electronic hertz. So we'll leave that as is. And as you can see, we're now in our Design Pro uh, dashboard here. So nothing's currently filled out, and we'll review this once we add and populate a couple different camera profiles, devices, and such. Uh, let's first go to profiles. So by default, there is an all devices profile. Uh, and if you're only looking to log in and similar to Toolbox Plus, check out a device, get some information about the spec sheet, see uh, applicable accessories for the camera for hardware and mounting, you can do just that. That's fine. You don't have to go through creating a whole profile. But if you are going to the next step and you want to add wave appliances, different types of recorders, maps, things of that sort, and print out a bill of material, this is where you would want to start. So by checking the all devices profile, you can see that the scene type is currently in retail. We can switch that. I'll just make it parking area. That's fine. Uh, your frames per second. So I'll keep it down to 10. Substream on. Y stream will turn to medium. Substream uh, frames per second. Leave it 7. Codec H265. Alter your lighting condition. Continuous recording on event. Let's say continuous on event. Let's say there's a Events are occurring 80% of the time. And let me highlight the schedule here. Boom, hit save. And then I can continue and add different filters. Now, this will also begin filtering out what cameras I get presented when I look through devices. Uh, for this example, I'm just gonna leave it open. But if, you know, depending on your uh, scope and what it is you're looking to actually grab, you could select, hey, I only want X series cameras, Q series, special TA series, so on and so forth, indoor, outdoor, uh, all the options are before you. So we'll back out and we have our profile. Again, it's all devices. And once we are good with that, we're actually gonna go over to our devices, say, okay, if I had a special profile, you would see your recommendations listed here, but because we're kind of just leaving it open, I have full access to the 381 models that are currently available with the Design Pro. So let's add, let's add a QNV C983R, type it in the search bar. Now I can either add it to the right here or use it as comparison. So let's add and then also turn on the compare function. Let's compare it to an X and O, anything that might be X and O. So we're looking at an X series bullet. We'll do the 8083R. Again, compare, add it to my list of cameras. And let's look at a P series. So, so we'll add the A9311, the non uh, the non Rode AI version. All right, so we've had three different models. I can now compare the three of them. And when I hit the play icon at the top, so we got the QNV, XNO, and the PNO. And if I go down, I can see all of the different specs listed between the cameras, resolution, field of view, if there's pan, tilt, rotate capability, type of backlight compensation, privacy masking, so on and so forth. So a nice big list of what's available. Of course, then I can go into the FOV comparison. Check it out from here, but let's back up. And another very solid piece of Design Pro is under any of these models, so I'll use the PNO as an example. I can go to accessories. 
And under the accessories tab, I can say, okay, where is this camera being mounted? Wall, ceiling, pole, corner, parapet. Let's say we're mounting it to a pole. You can see that we have the stainless steel strap included, the type of base plate that's going to go against the pole, or if it's a mount all in of itself, right? So I can do the SPP 400. You can see that juts out away from the pole. And if optionally, I need any one of these uh, extensions or plates, I can add it. And you can see how this would, in real time, look, add, and uh, combine when mounting this camera. So let's say, okay, we like that for that camera. We'll go into the X and O here. And we'll do a corner mount. Give this one pretty standard here. We'll do the 300. And you can mount it flush to the uh, mount itself. Or we could use, you can also use a back plate if you so desire. Moving on from that and looking at the accessories, we can also add licenses. So if you wanted to, let's say, add this camera and add it to OnCloud, one of your OnCloud platforms, or SiteMind or Health Pro, say, hey, for this camera, I want to add it, you know, a one year subscription. 5 meg for retention of 30 days, right? Okay, boom, we can add that. Also want to add it to Health Pro for a year. Okay, and this will automatically be transferred into your bill of material by the end when you're done uh, getting your devices configured. Next step, we have recorders. So as you can see, we only have three cameras. So if I wanted to add some more cameras real quick, say, okay, I'm gonna have three of those, or actually four of those and two of those. Now. I could say, hey, I've got my profile settings selected. I could then look through the list of servers, list of my wave recording servers. Let's say we're gonna use, I wanna use something that's overkill. We'll use one of the new WRNs, right? Okay, no RAID configuration. We'll do an eight terabyte uh, storage retention in there. We'll just get one. Great. Okay. So. Just by selecting that, we can see we've got plenty of channels left. The amount of bandwidth required for the cameras is plenty fine. Power's good, ports are good on the back of the unit. I would need additional wave licenses, and the storage doesn't quite match up for the 30 days retention that I'm asking for it. Um, so I could say, okay, well, if the eight terabytes not gonna get me there, let's go up to 24. Now we have plenty. So moving on from that, and again, there are more filters. You know, if we go to filter, we can say we want a 1U, one, 2U, one what OS, what type of RAID support, built-in PoE, or any type of redundant power, hit OK. And again, this is pulling from the applicable appliances that Hanwha sells. Maps, here's where you can go in and add different maps to start plotting your cameras. Uh, one thing that's really nice is you can either upload a map or simply use Google Maps. We'll use the TNAC HQ. We'll test. Hit OK. And then if I want to add a camera to a map, just grab the device, plot it on the map. Again, we are looking quite far out. But let me go from terrain to satellite. Now we can start plotting our cameras. Again, this is only a demonstration, so it's real quick, real easy. But if I had something like a floor plan or something like that, right, I can make sure that the scale of the map is correct, as well as the distance between two points. Rename the cameras to what I want. So I can name this in this gray area, call this 01. Oh, let's go here. Parking lot. So on and so forth. From here, I can also then just print what I currently have of the map if I just wanted to present it to a tech or add it to a report. Um, under additionals, you can see we are currently lacking in our wave licenses. So I could then just add, let's call it a wave license, POE power. Licenses two. I've got six. And if I again wanted to go in, 
select here. I can delete, re-add, as well as edit. So let's get a four pack of licenses in there. Good to go, done there. Hit the checkbox, and now in project we have eight. And if you add other switches or other miscellaneous uh, items such as cable or different tools you would need, uh, you could certainly add that under miscellaneous. And again, that would get filed in your bill of material. So let's just say, you know, you can't six cable, right? DF, whatever the vendor is, the type, and how many feet, let's just say 1,000, right? You can add that. And there you go. It's going to be added to your bill of material. Lastly, once you're complete with that, you can go into reports. Again, you can get your quotes, bill of material, spec generator, which will generate a nice uh, export of all the different spec sheets for these devices uh, that would be applicable. View overall bandwidth per camera, the storage in terabytes, the recorder, um, any accessories, what type of accessories were used, and it gives you a little snapshot of the configuration that we saw in the uh, devices tab. The map itself which you can also get here or within the uh, the maps setting. And again, just spec sheet. So that's about it for a quick look at Design Pro. As you can see, there's a lot more flexibility and functionality than I covered here. But just to get you off the ground and running, should do a pretty decent job of giving you an idea of what's capable. Uh, because this is a beta, as it says right here, if you have any feedback for us, just click on the uh, three dots here in the top right, click on feedback, and then you'll be taken to a portal where you can submit a JIRA ticket. But that's it.